Audi, Immortalium here, and today I'm doing a review of Cutie Honey from 1973. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Cutie Honey, uh, it's very interesting to note that the franchise was created by Go Nagai and was originally planned to be kind of both a manga and an anime uh, working together to be targeted towards young girls. They had a variety of merchandise in play and the format of the story was centered towards the romantic side. However, uh, they ended up not getting the time slot that they wanted and instead got a time slot that was more aimed at younger boys. Taking that into account, uh, Go Nagai and Toy Animation uh, made some very sharp uh, changes to the franchise, making it less about the romance, more about the action, as well as introducing a little bit of fan service. Since then, it has become quite a big franchise um, with a variety of anime TV shows, a variety of OVAs, and even some live action films. Uh, however, the question is, is Cutie Honey good? And that's what I'm going to be answering today. So let's get started. So what is the story of Cutie Honey? Cutie Honey follows a character called Honey Kisaragi, uh, who is attending a Catholic boarding school. Um, however, one day she returns to her home and finds that her father has been mortally wounded. The father explains to her uh, that she is an android made in the form of his lost daughter and that he has put a hidden device inside of her and that a villainous organization called Panterclaw is after that device. From then on, Cutie Honey must fight against this villainous organization and she gets the help of several characters such as Seiji, uh, who is a reporter, as well as his brother and his father, all of whom are infatuated with Honey. That's how the story begins. Now, with regards to the format of this show, this format is very much a monster of the week. Typically, the show starts out with some slice of life elements and then Honey encounters some Pantaclaw agents. She changes into various outfits to give her some assistance, such as being a race car driver, such as being a photographer, etc, etc. And eventually it climaxes with her turning into her sword fighting stage with pink hair and defeating the villain. And that's the primary story that you will be seeing throughout the entirety of this show. And this is an important show for the magical girl genre, uh, introducing various elements such as, for instance, transforming from one stage to the other, losing all of her clothes. That's something you will see in a lot of magical girl series such as Sailor Moon, Puella Magi, Magical Magica, etc, etc. With regards to the actual quality of the show itself, I do have a big issue with it. And that is specifically to do with the amount of fan service in this. As I said before, this show was originally meant to be aimed at girls. However, they had to very quickly make the show appealing for boys. And their idea of it seemed to be, let's have Cutie Honey as provocative as possible. Uh, there are some very interesting moments in the opening, for instance, uh, showing off all of this fan service. And this fan service is present throughout the show that actually becomes steadily more and more aggressive as the show goes on. Eventually, it made me increasingly uncomfortable to actually watch this show with how aggressive the fan service was. And because of that, along with the fact that the story itself is very mediocre and most of the cast is mediocre, I do actually like the character of Honey Kisaragi. She is quite an appealing a protagonist. Uh, very nice, very pleasant, with a bit of a troublesome side to her. Um, overall, I do have to say that I'm not a particularly big fan of this show. And while I acknowledge its historical importance, um, I do think that it has not held up particularly well. Speaking of things that haven't held up particularly well, the animation was provided by Toei Animation. In comparison to the animation seen in Space Pirate Captain Herlock several years later, I think that the animation here is very stiff, very inconsistent in quality. There are plenty of scenes where the characters are very awkwardly moving about the screen. There's plenty of animation errors. Although I do confess that I do actually quite like the art style for the show. I think the art style is quite nice. However, the animation quality cannot match it. And while there are a few moments of pretty good animation, overall I have to say that the animation quality itself is pretty mediocre, um, only kind of saved by the appealing art style. With regards to the music, the music here is quite good. 
Um, it's got a very 70s vibe. And the opening, which has been used in pretty much every Cutie Honey incarnation, is a fantastically catchy song. The music quality of the show itself is pretty good, and I do have to say that the music is a high point for this show. With regards to the voice acting, now first of all it's worth noting that this series is Japanese only. Uh, there is no English dub created for this series, so if you're gonna watch it, it has to be in Japanese. But, something that kind of endeared me towards the show a bit was, I remember sitting down to watch this show, and I heard Honey speak, and I remember thinking to myself, that voice sounds very familiar. Is that Eiko Masuyama? <laughs> and I checked the credits, and lo and behold, it was Eiko Masayama. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Eiko Masayama, she is the voice of Fujiko Mine uh, from Lupin the Third Part Two onwards until relatively recently. And hearing her voice um, actually did endear me to this show. It reminded me of her performance from uh, Lupin the Third uh, in, in a kind of more innocent way. And I think she gives a very good performance as Honey Kisaragi. Uh, the rest of the voice cast do a pretty good job as well, working with the characters that they have been provided, although admittedly very few of them are of any substance. With regards to how this show was released in the West, um, this show was released by Discotech Media. And just like many of their other shows, uh, this specifically says Region 1 on the back, uh, but has no problem running on my Region 2 DVD player. I cannot say for other regions, but I can say that this works for both Region 1 and Region 2. So, importing is not a problem. Unfortunately, there are pretty much no extras in this box set. Uh, you just get the show itself. So while I think it is a shame that there are no extras in this, um, I do have to say that I do appreciate the fact uh, that Discotech Media were willing to release this show. And they released it all in one box set, all 25 episodes. And the picture quality is pretty good. The subtitles have the occasional error in it, um, but in general, uh, they do well to convey the story. And overall, I'm pretty happy with the way this was released. Is it a shame that there are no extras in this? Yes, but what can you do? So in conclusion, what are my thoughts on Cutie Honey? Well, I think it is an important show historically, and from that sense, I am happy to own this. As for the quality of the show itself, I remember enjoying it a little bit as the show began, um, but as the episodes passed by, the repetitious nature of the storytelling, as well as the increasingly aggressive fan service, eventually put me off. And so overall, I can't really recommend this series, at least unless you're interested in the franchise Cutie Honey, or if you're interested in seeing one of the earlier Magical Girl works. Beyond that, I think there are plenty of other anime shows, even from the time period, uh, that are far greater than this. And so for most people, I can say that I can't recommend this show. So that was my review of Cutie Honey. Uh, let me know your thoughts on the franchise, whether you have seen any of its incarnations, whether you've seen this incarnation, what your thoughts were on it. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and bye-bye.